In today's video lesson, you are going to learn even more about violoncello das Palace. This video is especially for you if you are a self-employed or part-time employed or independent classical or baroque or chamber violinist or violist and violoncello das Palace or someone considering playing also the violoncello das Palace and finding your unique voice as a musician and opening new career opportunities in your musical life. So I want to draw your attention to the Smart Spilist Roadmap and today we are going to speak about one of the parts of this approach, the art. What do I mean by the art? By the art I mean the artistic representations of the Violoncello da Spala in the works of art by the 17th and 18th century artists. Why is this important for you to know? Here's the thing, I've discovered some Violoncello da Spala pioneers forget about the importance of sharing artistic representations of the Violoncello da Spala in the works of art by the 17th and 18th century artists with their audiences, with their colleagues, with their employers, with their promoters. And why is this such a big problem? Well, here's the thing. Your audience, your colleagues, your promoters might not be quite aware about what is Violoncello da Spala and why is this significant. They might think that Violoncello da Spala is a great instrument, sounds nice, but it is a novel invention. And why should anyone need? What purpose does it serve, if any? And when I work with my clients, I teach them to never forget about sharing these historical images of Violoncello da Spala in the works of art with the audiences. And when they do this, they position themselves completely differently. Now their audiences see them as ambassadors to the well-forgotten past, ambassadors to an important page in the history of classical music, in the history of our culture, musical culture, and a lot of music lovers and a lot of musicians, at least musicians like us, care about musical culture. And that way, they elevate the perceived value of what they do, my clients. Do you see the advantage of showing the importance of what you do to your audiences? Because otherwise they might just not get the point. So I want to speak more in detail about the art, but I want to begin by asking you a question. Would you agree that what you see is not always what you think you see, and it might be something else? And this is so true, especially about iconographical representations of musical instruments and especially violoncello da Spala in the works of art. So I want to draw your attention to the three eyes. Think of them as three subfolders inside this large folder called art. And I want to speak about the middle eye, which is illusion. Now, what do I mean by the illusion? As I mentioned, what you see is not necessarily what you think you see. So I want to share with you my screen so that I can make my point with all clarity. On this screen, you see a giant instrument supported on the lap and kind of against the shoulder. So it is a violon or violoncello da Spala. It is a painting created by Patrizio Barbelli in 1641. So it is before the introduction of the metal wound strings and before the introduction of the smaller violoncello. And what is your first impression? You might think, wow, this is a giant instrument, probably about the size of the modern day cello, if not bigger. Here's the question, and this is a very important question, because the point is, this instrument is not what you think you see, it is something else. What do I mean by this? How can you say anything certain about the size of this instrument if you do not have a point of reference? Now, what is the point of reference in this particular painting? Well, here it is. It is the distance between the pupils of the eyes of the player. And according to the research by medical professionals, the distance between the pupils of the eyes in the 17th century or in the 21st century hasn't changed that much, if at all. So that distance was always somewhere between 60 and 65 millimeters. Why is this significant? Well, here's why, because now you have a unit of measurement which you can use to estimate roughly the size of this instrument. And when you do this, you discover that the middle bouts of this instrument 
is indeed very narrow. The upper bouts and the lower bouts of this instrument are wide, but not quite as wide as modern-day cello. And this instrument is indeed very long, probably about as long as the modern-day cello. What you also see in this particular painting is that the back of the instrument, it appears that it is broader, wider than the top of the instrument, which kind of makes sense if this instrument was indeed created for playing in that posture as violone or violoncello the spalla and definitely these very narrow bouts make all the sense because the player needs that space for the bowing arm. And why is this important? Why am I sharing this knowledge with you? Here's what you really need to remember. And this is the most important part, point of this video lesson. What your audiences see is what you get. If your audiences do not understand the significance of what you are doing, you are getting in return misunderstanding. However, when you show your audiences that what you do is culturally important work because you are now not just the player of some novel crazy instrument no one knows and musicians didn't need for 250 years, now you are an ambassador reviving a lost page in the history of classical music. And that opens new career opportunities in your musical life as a self-employed, independent, successful or wanting to become more successful violinist or violist and violoncellist da Spala or someone still just considering to become a violoncellist da Spala and now you can already share this knowledge with your audiences, with your colleagues, with your employer and again change the perception how people see what you do and find your unique voice and open your career opportunities in your musical life in the next few months or years. Would that be welcome in your life? You might be wondering who am I anyway and why should you trust anything I say? Well, I'm Dimitri. I'm the award-winning author of the published book on fine violin making from the old master's legacy to the future of the craft with a forward by Raymond Aaron, New York Times bestselling author. And in the past 30 plus years, I've been specializing in crafting instruments of the violin family for musicians from anywhere in the world and helping musicians to find their unique voice and attract the respect, recognition, and revenue that talent deserves. And I'm also the author of the book on the Spalla, how violinists can find their unique voice and open new career opportunities in 14 days. And in the past 20 years, or almost 20 years, I've been specializing in crafting violoncellos da Spalla for world-class musicians anywhere in the world. I hope you found some value in this video lesson. If you did, show me some appreciation, show me some thumbs up, like this video, comment on this video, share this video with your fans, with your friends, with your colleagues, with your family. And if you have any questions, do comment below this video because I'm here to help. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel or my profile wherever you see this video. Maybe you're watching this video on LinkedIn, maybe you're watching this video on Facebook or Instagram, wherever you're watching this video, subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss future content because there is a lot that I would like to share with you. We cannot cover everything. We cannot even cover all of the artistic representations of Vianchelda Spal in the works of art in this video. However, all of this unique information and the smart polished roadmap is fully covered in depth, in considerable detail in my book on the Spala. So if you are interested in finding your unique voice and if you are a freelance or self-employed chamber or baroque violinist or violist and if you are interested in more exciting new career opportunities coming your way in the coming few months or years, then you are more than welcome to grab your very own signed by the author copy of my book. I will leave a link to the book's website somewhere in the description of this video. So I very warmly welcome to learn more about the book and pre-order your signed by the author copy of the book. With that said, 
I would like to thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. I hope you have learned something. If you did learn something and you appreciate this knowledge, you are very warmly welcome to comment below this video. What are your key takeaways from this video? What have you learned in this video? And what you would like me to cover in the next video for you? I'm looking forward to connecting with you in my future video. All the best. Thank you.